Hey everybody here, I got a great video for you today. I got a video about how does athletics or sports work in prison? I've been getting a lot of emails on that. So let me just uh, tell you guys how that works. But before I get started everybody, please check me on YouTube member programs, Patreon, but Discord's going great, just go to our Discord. All these links are in the below. Our merch, love it. My shirt, everything I do. Of course, the Crooked Diamond Cigar is releasing. In, in, in less than a month, October 3rd, my birthday, we got the giveaway, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on, check it out in the links below, and please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and please hit that like button as well, and the notification button, please just help us out any way you can. With that said, everybody, I want to get into how does sports work in prison, and I'm going to tell you how, you know, I have some great pictures of me who, I ran a sports team in a place called Jessup, Georgia. It was called the White Sox. I mean, I actually had a team, the White Sox, and the head guy was from Chicago, and his name was Billy. I say the head guy, he was kind of slow in the head, but I put together a, a, a softball team, a white softball team, and when I did that, what I did was, I made shirts, I had shirts, bought shirts off the commissary. I actually had an artist on the yard actually make numbered and shirts and stuff for the whole team. Yeah, I know, I paid for that and this stuff. And it was just a fun thing. And we used to play on the yard. How does sports totally work? And I'm gonna talk about all sports in general because I'm gonna go through them. Every prison works a little bit different. Like in a penitentiary, it's a little bit different than a medium. And a medium, I'm assuming, is gonna be a little bit different than a low or a camp because of security reasons is number one. That's the first thing. You gotta remember, in prison, if you're in a high security prison, I mean, when they let a bat out of a, out of the cage, they have to have guards there to watch what happens with that bat. Plus, in a penitentiary, we had gun towers. So the guards would come down and shoot or at least pull the guns out of that tower but make everybody get on their belly. Obviously, they know there's a deadly weapon out there. When you put a bat on a yard, it's a deadly weapon. Same with anything else. I was in Edgefield uh, and they actually had horseshoes. Yes, horseshoes with that fucking steel thing. You know, we checked out, they did everything. But here's a penitentiary at Horseshoes. As a matter of fact, I used to play with James Arch, the guy who died in prison. I, if you want to see that video, you can go into the playlist. Real sad situation where the prison let him die and they ended up putting me in the hole for about 11 straight months just on that case. So in prison, let's face it, like anywhere else, if you're a good athlete, you can get by. You can, you're going to be asked to play on a football team or a basketball team or a baseball team, or softball, they don't play baseball, softball team. Soccer. I would watch the young guy. I would watch the Spanish who are very big into soccer. And now they have these sports. They have organized sports. Literally, you know, the guys will get with you. Who runs organized sports? Well, they have a rec department. Now, a rec department is going to give authorization to have a league or whatever they're going to do. But once that's done, that rec department don't give a shit what happens. It's the players, the people, and they'll put together a whole group of guys who will organize that league. We had a multiple teams, you had black teams, you might have a North Carolina team. Broderick Graves was a professional athlete, played on a team from North Carolina. He was from that area, was from North Carolina, so he had the Carolina boys and they put their own team together. The Northeast guys, the New York, Philly, Boston, all those kind of guys would put a team together. Sometimes it's, they'll have them by race and area, and sometimes they'll have them by just like seniors or older people, or just a group of guys will play together. Sometimes that happens a lot. I played on a team with Willie Aikens. Now, obviously, Willie Aikens is a black guy. So I played against Willie Aikens, and I played with Willie Aikens. I remember, you know, here's a professional baseball player in the major leagues, baseball. And I used to play first base. Sometimes I played third base. He used to tell me, Larry, I don't care where you throw it, just don't throw it where I can't catch it. Because that man will catch the ball anywhere. When I say anywhere, bam, bam, catching it back from... It didn't matter, of course he couldn't go get it if it was 20 feet in the air. Other than that, Willie Aikens had that ball and he had it guaranteed. Watch the guy scoop ball. And when he hit the ball, he was a lefty. When he hit that ball, when I tell you, you listen, when I played second base against him, I would park my ass damn near in the outfield. right? Not only on the grass, maybe even a little further on the grass. The first baseman as well. First of all, Willie couldn't run. Willie had no knees. Couldn't run a little bit, so you can get him out if you get it as deep as you went or wherever you're gonna go. But he hit the ball so hard. Man, Willie Aikens hit that fucking ball. So let me go back to organizing the leagues. 
So how it goes, let's take Atlanta. I was on a basketball team and I played with a basketball team uh, and also used to bet on them and stuff. Um, it was the white basketball team. Now, you know, I, I often tell people, you know, there is no such thing as fouls in basketball. We just didn't have fouls, guys. It, it, it was, I mean, listen, you had a re if somebody called a foul. Now we had referees in the league, you'd have refs. Who the fuck wants to be a ref? You never win. And, and these people will kill you. Because first of all, what a lot of people don't know in prison, there's a lot of gambling. A lot of gambling on these games. I mean, I watched a race, running races. They set up running races. You gotta remember something. All sports or all athletics in a prison is a way for people, one, to get uh, a lot of stress out. You know, you go out there, you play softball, you play football, you play flag. They didn't play tackle football, they played flag football. But damn, might, might as well be tackle football. I remember I was in the, in the prison and I played on the team and I tackled somebody. Almost caused a fucking riot. It was just a natural reaction to hit somebody and then grab them. It wasn't natural for me to go grab a fucking uh, flag off somebody. But I played all the sports. And again, believe it or not, in Atlanta, United States Penitentiary Atlanta, at the time, the worst prison in the country, they had tennis. You're thinking, wow, look at these guys, they got fucking tennis. The gangsters played tennis, it was funny. That's who played tennis in prison. It was really, it really was funny if you think about it. We used to sit around. I played a little bit of tennis, but you, you know the mobsters, the old mobsters, the Vic Arenas, Nicky Scarfo, Vic Amuso. But a bigger gangsters over there would be playing tennis. They asked me to play a few times. Not my kind of sport. I grew up in the Bronx. I don't know how these motherfuckers knew about tennis either, because not one of them fucking played tennis on the streets. I can tell you nobody's playing tennis on the streets. Guarantee that. So it was kind of funny in that regard that we'd have these guys playing tennis uh, in Atlanta. But it was, again, it was a sport. They let us do it. You can buy rackets, you can do certain things. See, when I was in, you could buy certain things off of the commissary. And now obviously you couldn't buy gloves or something of that nature. What we had is you had, you get a glove, the rec department had bought gloves with whatever money. Now, how prison works as well, is all the money that is generated toward, from commissary, they say that goes into the recreation fund in prison. Does it really? Let's face it, they don't give you what you really want. I don't think all the money that's generated in the commissary goes towards the rec. It is supposed to. It is supposed to go for new equipment, new balls, new soccer balls, basketballs, everything that goes on in prison. Gotta remember, you have to have a basketball. Obviously, basketball was the only sport now, when we had big games, when there was a lot of people congregating, you'd see guards come there. But they didn't have to be at the basketball game like they had to be at a baseball game because the baseball game, they had to issue baseball bats. And they would put one or two bats out there, maybe three. And whatever they would, you'd have to use that bat. Plus, they have a ball, a very hard ball. The person could throw in somebody's face and kill them or knock them out. Basketball, they didn't have that. Soccer, either. Soccer didn't have, unless it was a big game and they knew something was going on, the prison knows what is going on. Another thing the prison does, and they've done it in two of the prisons I was in, they would bring outside softball teams in to play. Sometimes it's local stars, sometimes it's a local team. A lot of times it's churches. A lot of churches would do, bring in basketball teams or bring in a baseball team or bring a uh, softball team. I always say baseball, softball. Or even, uh, I've never seen a football team brought in anywhere. But I also seen recreation and stuff department bring in, like in one prison I was in, they brought in a strong man. I mean, a fucking strong man. This guy could bend steel. And he did all these demonstrations for everybody in the yard. And you're thinking, how fucking strong is this motherfucker? I mean, I seen a guy bend bars, do, you know, all those strong men shits. He was, was actually a strong man in competition. They become Christians and they go to Christian organizations. Usually I say Christian, it could be any religious organization for that matter. And what they do is they'll get with the program and they'll say, we'd like to bring. Like I played against, well, I didn't play. I was on the field with them and I was watching them and I, I got a, taken at bat with one of them. The king of the court was Eddie Fainer. Eddie Fainer's the most famous softball team in, in the world. They're four players, legitly. In fact, I think the fastest pitch ever thrown was by Eddie Fainer, 116 miles an hour. Eddie Fainer struck out Willie Mays, the one of the best baseball players ever lived. He struck him out. This guy, Eddie Fainer, would shoot, strike you out from second base, throw between your legs. You couldn't even see the ball. It's an exhibition, of course, 
but they would get the best players on our yard and they'd play against these guys and then they always lose you can't beat them and it really was like a three inning or four inning game and the rules were a little bit bent obviously but they all were great hitters they were all great fielders, and they were all unbelievable athletes. In fact, when I played against Eddie Fainer, he only threw about 10 pitches. He was just there as the voice, and they tell stories about people they played against, and stuff like that. But he had another guy, his protege, or whoever it was, brought in by the rec, and they brought him in, and boy, unbelievable. I think it's the most powerful thing they can do in, in prisons, because let's face it, what's the one common denominator everybody has? Sports. Everybody loves football. Everybody loves basketball. Everybody loves all of these things we do, sports-wise, and it, it brings people together. Sports is a great unifier. I wish, uh, you know, some of these other countries, well, it's hard for a war-torn country to bring a sports team somewhere. But that's why the Olympics were really founded. The Olympics were to bring countries together. And whether it was wartime or not, they had the Olympics. Sometimes they had to suspend them, and they've done it, World War II they did. The whole world's at war, there was no, but there were Olympics right up to that, but sports is the greatest unifier in the world, and it sure is a unifier in prison. Very rarely you see the two gangs or any gangs, you know, fighting on the sports, because everybody wants to play them. Everybody wants to get that wreck in. Everybody wants to show their talent, their personal talents. So when you can do that, and you can show your personal talents wherever it is, you want to highlight that. You don't care if it's in front of white people, Hispanic people, Asian people, black people. It does not matter. Even white guys, they want to play basketball. People say, oh, you can't play against the black guys. Listen, you can. I, again, that's being all subjective to what everybody is. Obviously, on our, every prison yard I went to, the Hispanics always won the soccer. Always won the soccer. In, in every prison I was in, always the black teams have won the basketball. We had a kid in Atlanta named Gresham, as his name was. It was John Gresham, but it was Gresham. This kid played for one of the major colleges. He was an all-star, and I mean an all-star, pro guaranteed. I watched that kid play unreal basketball. Nobody could stop him. He was unbelievable. He was a little crazy, too, but uh, his name was Gresham. Unbelievable basketball player. One of the best I've ever saw. I watched him. We, people would go down and just watch him play. Then we had track and field. Again, the one of the fastest men I've ever seen in my life was Broderick Graves, and he, he ran the 100 and so fast. He, you watch a, a, a runner get, they get up and they stand up and, they, and their back is straight and they're running down that thing. Man, are they unbelievable. Unbelievable, that's all I could say. So, and then I, but I did see him lose in the 40 to a kid who can sprint like unbelievable. Matter of fact, I played softball against that kid, and that kid, you could not get him out of first base. I mean, if he hit the ball on the ground, Unless it was the rocketest rock you could get. You couldn't get him out. He was that fast. And he was a lefty. So he's out of the box fast. And, and the bases are shorter in softball than they are in Major League Baseball. So a lot of things are different. And, uh, but he was unbelievable. The guy, you couldn't stop the guy. That's how fast that guy was. So everything else, again, we're doing is uh, talking about sports and prison. So the people put it together. And when I say the people, the inmates. I had a team in Jessup, Georgia with shirts and the whole works. You'd see everybody goes, we'll meet at the yard, we'll practice, you have practice time. I mean, obviously usually guys would practice with each other, uh, meaning like one team would play if they get them let bats out, you know, they have to have guards out there. I think it was two in Atlanta and the tower had to be notified. So they used to tell, you can't go until the tower's notified. Well, the tower's notified that they're gonna be playing with a baseball bats on the fucking yard. Let me be out there looking out so they don't attack a guard with a baseball bat or an, another enemy. You know, they will stop that as well. So the, the people coordinate in all ways. The administration in most prisons, in all prisons, they totally let you play sports. They even let you, in, in fact, sports are so powerful in prison. What do they do? During the Super Bowl, you get to watch the Super Bowl. It usually ends at about 10 o'clock. It ends not, it started at 6.30, 7 on a, a uh, on a, I think it's 6.30 on a Sunday. And it usually ended by 9.30, quarter to 10. And instead of locking down, if there was any overtime or anything, they let, they let everybody stay up. As well as basketball, the NBA Finals, the Finals, you used to got to watch all games. Of course, everybody's rooting for seven games so you can stay out, but yes, we used to get to watch that. Baseball as well. 
they would let us stay out and watch the bed. There'd be a memo come out. So the warden has authorized a, a late night for NBA final game number boom boom. People will lock in right after the game. If there's any problems or any anybody tries to push this rule, they're gonna close that shit down. And trust me, nobody in that prison is gonna let you fuck that rule up. I can guarantee it. So we even got to watch major sports, whether it was soccer, basketball, baseball, even hockey. Uh, all the major sports were in prison, and they were, if they were past lockdown hour, they would always, always, in every prison I was in at least, they uh, let it go. You know, I got out 2007, 14 years ago. I did get to watch sports. I did get to play sports. I did, there are organized sports in prison. Don't ever forget that. Listen, if you're an athlete, it does help a little, but it's not gonna save your life either. You know, I, I have seen a lot of crazy shit happen, some funny stories on the basketball court. But at one time we had a bet. And I ran on that fucking basketball court after somebody because it was a big bet and it was cheating straight in my face. I just couldn't accept it. So that's just what happened there. With that said, listen, that's how sports work in prison. It goes in all prisons, it's all sports. Mostly ethnicities have their sport, but everybody does participate. And you know what? It is the great unifier, as should live golf be a great unifier. But with that all said, everybody have a great day. Please stay safe, make good choices. And I'll see you back here on Thursday. Take care, everybody.